In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this atom animation in Blender 3D. I will be using the EV renderer, which is built in by default. No plugins, all from scratch. So if you want to level up your Blender skills, let's jump in. If you're feeling lazy, the finished project files will be available to Patreon subscribers, but otherwise, let's work through it together. The first thing we're going to do is create our rings. So to do that, we're going to create some curves. So if you hold shift and A, curve, and then circle. So then if you click on your curve here and you come down to the curve panel down here, we want to find the depth option and bump that up a bit. Let's go quite small. I'm gonna go for 0 0.01. Up here in the resolution, we're going to bump the render up to 64 and the preview, we may as well bump that all the way up as well. And you can just see now that the circle is much smoother because of that. We can also up the resolution here from four to something a bit higher, maybe 10. And this will all just make it look a bit nicer in the final render. So we want two more rings. So I'm going to press shift D to duplicate that and then just right click so that it goes back to its original position. Then instead of scaling it down, because that will mess it up a little bit, instead I'm going to tweak the offset here under the geometry panel and just lower that down. And let's do that again, control D, right click and let's lower the offset a bit more. So now we have our three rings. Let's create the center of our atom, which is gonna be a mix of protons and neutrons. We're going to press Shift A, Mesh, and add in a UV sphere. And that's way too big, so we're going to scale it down by pressing S. Press F3 and type in Shade Smooth. Next, we're going to create a empty plane axis. We're going to click on our sphere, press Shift to go into edit mode. Make sure you're in edit mode. Move it up to around there. Click on your sphere, Shift click the empty axes, Control P, set parent to object, keep transform. Now let's click back on our sphere, go to our modifiers and add an array modifier. Click object offset and uncheck relative offset. Set our object to the empty we just created. If we up the count in our array modifier to maybe six, press shift A, apply all transforms. Now if we come to the object properties for this sphere and we rotate it on one of our axes, you can see the array is taking shape. So if we have six spheres, we need to do 360 divided by six, which you can just literally type in here and press enter, and that gives you 60 degrees. Uh, now they're quite far apart from each other, we want them to be sort of touching each other. So if you press G and press Z and press Z again, and you'll now be moving it on the local Z axis, and then scale it down until they're all touching. So now let's come over to our array modifier, click this drop down, apply it, Shift D to duplicate this ring. Let's rotate it on the Z by 90. Actually, we would want to try and fit two of these in here. So let's uh, rotate it on the Z again here, duplicate it again, and rotate it on the Z like so. And now we have a bunch of duplicates for this top one. So I'm just gonna delete the top and bottom for this row and delete the top and bottom for this row. And there we go. And because we can see into the center a little bit through these gaps, I'm just gonna duplicate this one here, Shift D, and I'm gonna move it into the center just in case we see that during the render. Nice, so now we have our bits of atom. Let's shift click them all together. Press Control J, which is gonna transform them all into one big mesh. And let's scale it down. I think around there makes sense. Now that we have the model basically worked out, we're going to work on the animation. So we want these rings to rotate around in a kind of almost random way. I'm not gonna use keyframes, I'm gonna instead use drivers. Don't be intimidated, they're actually not as complex as you think, and it means that your animation will just run forever. So let's click on this inner ring. Let's come over to the rotation properties in the object panel. I'm going to right click rotation X and click add driver. Now we're only gonna have to write this once and then we can copy and paste it. We're basically gonna write a little expression in here which is gonna, is gonna tell the ring to just rotate forever. So to do that, we need to get the active frame. So we can say use the current frame number as the rotation. So then as the animation moves forward in time, the rotation is gonna move forward in time. If that is confusing, just uh, hold on, it will make sense. So down here in this little drivers panel, we've got an input variable menu. If we click this drop down, select single property, under property, select scene, 
and then scene again. Now we're going to type in frame current. And what this is going to do is it's just going to get whatever frame it is and it's going to set the rotation to that to that value. So if I play it, it's just going ridiculously fast. And we can give it this variable a name. Let's call it time. Actually, no, let's call it frame. That's probably better. Now in our expression, we can say, okay, we want the rotation to equal frame. And then if we want to slow it down, because that was very fast, we can times it by a very low value. So we're going to times it by 0.01, for instance. Now if we press play, you can see it's moving very slowly. Let's speed it up a bit. Let's say 0.05. That's a bit better. And let's right click copy driver. And now we can just paste this driver into the Y property. And now we have quite a cool spinning ring. So let's do it for the next ring. And maybe let's try adding it to the X and the, and the Z instead. So we have now a different kind of rotation. And again, for the outermost ring, let's do it for the Y and Z. Like this. However, there's still not quite enough randomness for me here because at the start, they're all the same. And every now and again, they'll all be horizontal like this. So we can add some randomness here. So let's edit the driver for the outer ring, for instance. And let's just put these all in some parentheses and let's just offset it by a certain value. So let's just say 150 plus this. We're just offsetting it by 150. So now look at frame at frame zero, it's gonna be offset by this amount. Let's do the same for this. Let's maybe change the X property and offset it by a certain value. Let's just say 500. Okay, it's looking a bit more random now. And the same with the inner ring. Let's maybe change the Y and offset it by, I don't know, a thousand. Boom. Okay, so we've got the ring animation done. Now we're gonna animate the uh, inner atom. I think all we want it to do is shake as if it has lots of energy um, built up and maybe even rotate. Let's first of all do the shaking. So I'm going to click the atom, press I, add a location keyframe. Let's open a new window in Blender here by just dragging that little corner. Let's go to the graph editor. Now because we added a position keyframe, we can see these properties here, X, Y, Z. We're going to press N with X highlighted, and this is going to bring up this side menu. Let's click Modifiers, Add Modifier, Noise, and now if we press Play, so it's added a bunch of noise on the X. It's a bit too extreme, so we're going to turn the strength down to, let's say, 0.3. See how it's still a bit much. Let's try 0.2, 0.1. Yeah, let's try that. And then let's press this button here to copy the modifier and paste it into the Y and Z. Now it looks not random enough, so we're going to come to our Y, change the phase. So if we change the phase for each one, it should look a lot more random. There you go. So let's now close this graph editor and we can take a look at what we've got so far. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the materials. So first of all, come to the render properties window and make sure you are in the EV renderer. Let's come over to the material menu and press new to create a new material. Let's do the atom first. So we want some protons and neutrons in here. Usually that I think they're depicted as like red and blue. So we'll stick with that. So let's name this material proton and let's change the base color to a red. Let's make a new material again. Call this neutron and let's change this to a blue. Now let's press shift to go into edit mode by pressing L on different parts of the mesh. Let's select the parts of the mesh that you want to be blue. And press assign here. I think we might need one or one more blue, maybe to balance it out. Maybe this one. We can now delete this null that we made earlier because we don't need it. Now to make the center of the atom spin, we can actually do this really quickly just by copying one of the drivers we made for the rings. Right click copy driver and let's paste it into the rotation for the atom. And you can see now it is rotating. Maybe even paste it into the X and the Y and the Z, why not? There we go. Let's add some subsurface to these two materials. 
I'm gonna up it to like 0.5. I just think it makes it look a bit more real and organic. I'm going to decrease the roughness a little bit just so we get those specular highlights on the orbs. So roughness to about 0.3. Now let's add some materials to the rings. So I'm just gonna click on a ring, press new. Let's just go for a black material. Let's call it ring. And now let's go to our other rings and just from the drop down, select ring. So initial materials are done. So let's set up the camera now. So I'm gonna click on our camera. I'm gonna press zero on the numpad, which is going to take me to what my camera can see. I'm going to open up the camera properties here by pressing N and I'm going to just set the location to zero and the rotation to zero. I'm gonna to have to press zero again to come out of camera view so I can see what's going on. I'm gonna rotate the camera on the X by 90 so that we can see it's facing uh, our atom and I'm going to press G and move it on the Y axis so it's facing our atom like so. We're going to create a back plane so to do that shift A, mesh, plane, move it down, scale it up, press tab to go into edit mode, edge select up here, select this edge and extrude it by pressing E and extrude it upwards like that. Then we're going to add a subsurface modifier subdivision surface and we're going to up the levels to five and five in the render as well. So now we just have this smoothly curving backplane which can provide a nice little sort of gradient in the background and I'm going to scale it up so it fills our camera view. Now we can see a shadow on the bottom which also looks quite nice. Let's add in some quick lighting. So I'm going to grab the default light here which we can see is up here. I'm going to set it to zero in its location and I'm going to press G and Z and move it up. So now we just have one point light that is shining from above. And if we disable and enable that, we can see what it's doing. I'm also gonna add a backlight. So shift A, light, area, and we're going to move it back on the Y, I'll rotate it by minus 90 on the X so that it's facing our atom, scale it up. I might even go to like 300 on the power to start with. And if we disable and enable that, you can see it's just uh, adding a nice white outline from the back. And at different parts of the rotation of the rings, you'll be able to see it more clearly. So like here on the ring, for instance, if I did disable this backlight, you can see the effect that it's having. I'm just going to rename uh, this object to Atom Center so I know what we're referring to here. The other thing that's going to really make this look better is adding some depth blur. So if we click on our camera and we come to depth of field, if we enable it. And for the focus object, if we select the atom center object and I'm going to lower the f-stop to 0.2, so quite extreme. This is gonna mean that the atom is in focus, but anything closer to the camera and further away from the camera than the atom is, is going to be blurred. And you can adjust the f-stop to whatever you like. You might not like such extreme depth blur. So let's see what we've got now. So we've got the protons and neutrons, we've got these um, electron rings, but we need to add the actual electrons. So to create the electrons, we're going to add a new mesh, add in another sphere and make it much smaller. Again, let's shade smooth by pressing F3, typing in shade smooth. Now we want to come to the object constraint properties, add an object constraint, follow path, and let's click outer ring. And you can see now it is following our outer ring. If we move this offset, you can see it's now moving around the ring. So we need to add an expression to this offset, which just keeps on going and going and going. So let's right click, add driver, do the same thing we did before, where we add single property, scene, frame current, and then just type in the expression field frame, and then it's speeded up actually. So this time let's do frame times two and make sure we name our property as frame. And now, I don't know if you can see it, but the ball is moving around the ring as it spins. Let's add a material to the ball by coming to the materials panel, pressing new, name this material electron. Let's add some emission to it. So let's change the emission color to a light blue and ramp up the emission strength. Make sure in your render properties that uh, bloom is selected and may as well check ambient occlusion while you're at it. You can now see kind of volumetric light, which is very cool. Now that we've enabled Bloom, we might wanna turn down some of our other lights. Um, for instance, our sun is a thousand watts. Maybe let's put that down a bit too. 
half that at least. Uh, and the backlight also turn that down. Okay, now we can see one of these electrons moving around our rings. Okay, so now let's add uh, electrons to the other rings. We press Shift D to duplicate this uh, electron. So now we have another one here. If we go to the object constraints panel and we change the target to middle ring, for some reason this one looks wrong. And the reason for this is it's because we modified under the curves panel the offset to make it uh, to make the ring closer to the center. If we change this offset back to zero, it looks correct again. And this is just the limitation with the follow path that I discovered. So to fix this, we're going to have to get rid of the offset and then scale it down. Now the problem with this is that the ring now looks smaller, looks kind of weird. We're going to fix that afterwards. Let's just do it like that for now. Duplicate the electron again, set it to inner ring, and let's do the same thing. Go to our inner ring properties on the curve panel, set the offset back to zero, and then scale it down again. Now, you might even be happy with uh, the rings being different uh, widths here. It actually looks kind of cool. But if you want to make all the rings the same width, you're gonna have to go into the curves panel and play with the depth here to make it to make them all match. So they'll all be slightly different values. So maybe for the inner ring, we'll select 0.02 and for this one, 0.05 or even 0.02 again. So now they look about the same. And I've just realized I accidentally moved the outer electron. So I'm just gonna put it back by duplicating again, outer ring, boom. Now we have all three electrons. If we go to our camera view, it's looking kind of cool. So I might make the outer ring a little bit smaller, something like that. You can just finesse to what you'd like. I think that looks fairly cool. And then you can make it your own. You can tweak the materials, can tweak the depth blur on the camera. You can um, animate the position of the camera to kind of move around it and try and make it your own. But that's about it, guys. I hope you guys found that useful. Let me know if you have any questions in the description. Uh, make sure to subscribe for more of these kind of tutorials. See you on the Flippity.